Well, welcome to another edition of Rooftop Tuesdays. This is the first time I've been on the roof in like a month due to weather or uh, timing or laziness or a combination of those three things like lazy weather. Anyway, today I wanna to have a brief conversation about pre-production. I've had a few questions either on the channel or in real life about how I do pre-production because this is kind of like a mythical dragon that we all chase of like how do you, when you're doing client work and video production, how do you handle the pre-production process. How do you make your client feel like you've got it all figured out when in reality, you're just trying to hang on for dear life and hope that the product turns out. So here's what I do. Every single client, I send them a list of questions as homework. And what I do with that homework is then I use that to develop interview questions if we're doing the, the classic interview-based content. All I ask are six questions. I want you to fill out and define these six boxes. And those six boxes come from Donald Miller's story brand uh, framework, which is, uh, he's just an author and a thinker that runs a company out of Nashville, Tennessee called Story Brand, which I think just works wonders in the video space as well as it is in the marketing space because we're all kind of connected. But you fill out who's the hero of your story. What is that hero's problem? And by problem, he means like, what is that felt need? Like what is their deep emotional issue that that hero has a problem with and he cannot overcome by themselves? And then who's the guide? Introduce a guide into the story. Who is the guide? And then that guide always comes with a plan. What is that guide's plan? And then finally there's a call to action. And then after the call to action, you should define what success looks like and what failure looks like. And really the call to action for me is, is that hero making a decision on the guide's plan. So I try to explain to each client what those things are and how they, how I might define those boxes for them and then I ask them to define it themselves. And then from that, I do develop interview questions. So for example, for a project that looks boring on the surface, last year I worked for a company who was a, basically an insurance holding company. They had four or 500 employees here in the KC Metro. Actually, they're called Spring Venture Group. Spring Venture Group on the surface on paper looks boring, right? Insurance holding company. But as we pressed into these boxes, we decided we first came at it like, you know what? Maybe the hero in the story is the, the, the older American who needs Medicare supplement and their problem is they don't have Medicare supplement. And it was kind of linear. And then suddenly we, me and the guy I worked with, Sean, what's up, Sean, if you're watching, love you. Former drummer of Titus, a uh, band I was in in high school. <laughs> we came to this, the, the idea that actually the hero is the, the postgraduate student out of college. Like they just graduated, they're looking for work. And their problem is there is no work that values them professionally and growing them professionally, as well as growing them personally, growing them creatively, and just growing them in every sphere of their life. They have, there, there are no jobs that will pay them well, value them as human beings, give them really flexible time off and flexible work hours, and basically treat them the way millennials want to be treated, which is so important in today's work environment. And that's their problem. And the guide is Spring, Spring Venture Group. So they're going to guide these college kids with, with the plan of bringing them into Spring Venture Group, teaching them how to sell well, teaching them how to grow, teaching them how to become a better professional and a better human all the way around. All the while using the medium of insurance sales and, and Medicare supplement and other products that you're actually selling to develop these people and make them better and better and better and send them right up in the system. They had so many examples of people that came on as, as cold calling salesmen or now in the C-suite, you know, CMO, CEO, CEO, Oh, oh, that kind of thing. So the whole point is, if you dig with those questions into what's actually going on from a story perspective, you can come up with some really compelling stories. Um, I will link our final project for spring below. We shot that with a C300 Mark II. Bobby Pitts helped on that project as well. That was just a really great project that utilized exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't already know who, if you don't already know Donald Miller, go check Donald Miller out. Yeah, see, this sucks. But one of the worst parts about daylight savings is typically, I record these things on Tuesday afternoons as the sun is going down. And by the time I post it, it's nighttime, but it looks really good when I film it. Well, the sun is really hard at this time of year after daylight savings time. So I'm gonna have to come up with a different solution, guys. Okay, so check out Donna Miller and StoryBrand, really valuable stuff. And I hope that helps your pre-production, pre-production workflow. Uh, I'm not talking about storyboards or shot lists and stuff because I just didn't find that stuff relevant. If you do that, cool. I don't ever storyboard, but I do make shot lists for commercial production. That's all for this week. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and hit subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. I do talk about audio for video mostly, as well as filmmaking in general like this one. And I do get on the roof every Tuesday and have kind of like a shorter, a more supplemental video, if you will. So watch out for the Friday show. I have something very special planned. Be sure and tune back in for that. It'll be posted at Friday at 10 o'clock a.m. sharp Central Standard, Central Standard Time. And, uh, and if nothing else, I will see you then.